It's March 7th, 2020. There are six new cases of COVID in BC and two are in long-term care. I'm worried the residents are gonna get depressed and I don't know how to help them. I spend so much time in their rooms. All of the activities are canceled. Volunteers are not allowed in. I really wanna spend more time with them, especially since their family members can't visit, but our workload's gone up. People are calling in sick. PPE is making everything take longer. March 16, 2020, the agency is gonna start deciding who gets a home visit and who doesn't. I came home today. Ryder saw me through the glass door of the mudroom and, and started to call for me, but I couldn't touch him. My mom picked him up, but he, he kept calling and reaching for me. He's two years old. He, he, he doesn't understand. After I put my scrubs in the washing machine and showered, he was on the couch sitting beside mom and he was sucking his thumb and holding his blanket. And it, there were tears on his cheeks and his face was all red. And he dug his face into my chest and did that, that shaking kind of sigh after they cried really hard. You know, oh, my heart hurts so much. I just, I can't stand it. I feel torn. I, I don't know how I'm going to leave him tomorrow. And the next day, when will this end? I, I just want normal again. The most stressful thing about this pandemic is my family. I'm homeschooling my kids. I don't know French or math. Heck, I didn't even get it when I was in school, so how in the world am I supposed to teach them? Apparently there's a new way of teaching math. I have no clue. I gotta Google it and figure it out somehow. Trying to get the kids to do anything but watch TV is next to impossible. Like, how am I supposed to get them to study when I'm at work all day? Staff are so supportive. We all look after each other. If I need help, they're ready to come and help me. And then, you know, if I'm done, I can go help them. Some of the older staff are, they're like our moms, like nothing phases them. They've been through SARS and Norwalk and they kind of roll with it. They're always reminding us younger ones that we're strong and we're gonna get through this together. There is so much going on at work right now that we try and keep things fun. For instance, in between meals, we'll have dance parties in the dining hall. Oh, one day, near the start of restrictions, I borrowed a costume from a friend. It was a T-Rex outfit. And I made a bunch of cupcakes, and I'm passing out cupcakes to the staff and the residents as T-Rex. I mean, who doesn't love T-Rex cupcakes, right? It was awesome. My soul longs for nature right now. I'm truly at peace when I'm walking in the forest. I try to notice the birds singing and the breeze on my cheeks. I come down to the ocean and I wash off. Then I fish and I pray to the water. It's March 25th, 2020. There are 55 long-term care workers infected in BC. The elders have assigned two of us to bring back groceries for the whole community. I'm afraid. I'm afraid when I leave the reserve that I could bring COVID back. I feel responsible for the elders especially. If we were to lose them, we would lose all the stories and the history they carry. There would be so much grief in us. I can't even imagine. Eric is laid off. We're worried about money. I, um, I can work overtime, but then I am just too tired to function and the house is such a mess. I asked Eric to do some cooking and cleaning and he said okay, but he is stressed and depressed. The elders don't smile that much anymore. They miss their freedom. Even just to go get their own groceries. They miss the hugs. They need the touch. We can't have traditional ceremonies or gatherings. 
even the once a week potlatches. We would have a speaker and everyone would stick around afterwards and share stories and tease each other. I miss those times. That was, that was a really long shift. More people are acting out. The PPE is making it difficult for people with dementia. Even though we're using our body language and our tone of voice, they can't read our facial expressions. What's really difficult is the people who are hard of hearing because they can't read our lips. <sighs> March 26, 2020. I heard the government is giving some money to help out our people. This is my restful place. It feels really good to get my hands in the dirt. It's a place that I can take up my anger or worry or any hurt that I have. It's my safe zone here. It's where I connect to the earth and I guess just be happy here. My garden has never looked so good. My dog is the best therapy. She's always happy to see me. Check this out. Jerry, Jerry, hi. Hi, Jerry, Jerry, hi. Oh, how are you? Oh. <laughs> oh. I watch more TV than I usually do. Just funny shows with my kids. God, it's amazing what a relief it is to have a good belly laugh. Well, at work, too, we make jokes that other people would probably find gross, like <laughs> the real meaning of a code brown. <sighs> we laugh so we don't cry. A group of us meet up for lunch in an empty parking lot. We used to do this sometimes before, but now it's so much more important. For all of us, we really need the time to connect. Sometimes we even call each other when there's a hard visit. Home care really is isolating. It's just you and the car between visits. And I really don't know what we would do without each other. The residents know we treat them like family. They, they love us. But as a care aide, I, uh, I feel invisible to everyone. Well, at the store, they have special hours for nurses, but they don't have anything for healthcare assistance. But in the workroom, I look over and there's a basket that's full of gifts from the community. And I was like, hmm. well, they do see us. This is a huge learning curve for me. I finished my HCA training right before the pandemic started. And then I found out that I'm pregnant. Nice timing, huh? My doctor said it's okay for me to work while pregnant, but what if they don't know how COVID affects the fetus? Anyway, I, um, I use extra hand sanitizer. I keep my own in my pocket and I wash my hands a million times a day and I always wear a mask. That's the best I can do. We don't have very good internet in our remote area. I used to have to go in once a week to get the messages off a computer in town. Now I have to go in once a day just to make sure we're not missing any guidelines we might need to follow. The work's been pretty tough, but our managers have been, they've been really good. They've been great. I feel like they really care about us. At team meetings, we go around in a circle and we give a thumbs up or a thumbs down. And if we give a thumbs down, they check in on us later. It's not like they're not experiencing their own stress, but they still walk around and make sure we're okay. And they provide every single thing that we need, all the information we can get, even though that changes from hour to hour. <laughs> Today was a great day. We got to meet with other community workers online and it was so valuable like gold to share our truths with other people in different places in BC. It also reminded me that I'm not alone in my struggle. So important that we could see and be seen and to know that we belong and that others care. Oh, today was super fun. They, they brought a band into the courtyard and they played all the music the residents like, you know, let me call you sweetheart and all those old ones. The residents were singing and, and moving to the music. It brightened everyone up. It was, it was like we felt lighter. Now we are allowed to see the ones that need it the most. 
Getting to see the clients again is the biggest joy for me. I try to bring that joy into everyone's homes. Some of them are feeling really lonely. Sometimes I sing when I help the clients get dressed or washed up. <laughs> I see myself as a caregiver for the whole community, not just my clients. I'm the only care worker who lives on the reserve. Everyone calls me when they have questions or they need something and I don't mind. We're all family. <sighs> Work has been difficult. But it's the, the extra stuff, the, the going the extra mile that gives you heart, that, that gives so much back to you. I love this work. It feeds your soul. You get these special moments. A, a resident I've known for a long time was dying. He didn't have any family. At the end of my shift, I went to check on him. Every few minutes, he would gasp this deep, deep breath and, and reach out and grab my hand. I found myself unable to leave. I, I did not want him reaching out and not having anyone there, so I stayed. I felt very honored to be with him. These are the times I know I'm in the right job. I can't imagine doing anything else. Most days I sit in my car and I look at the building before I go in and I think, what are you doing? How can you go in there? And I have to tell myself, yeah, you have to go in. The residents are waiting for you. They need you. We do our best to follow all of the precautions. So I take a deep breath and then I go in. <sighs>